Oh my God. Do you realize what we've done? Got this bag of chicken here, two chicken drumsticks, and to be honest, the drumstick is not my favorite piece of chicken. It has good meat, it's dark meat, but I prefer the thigh, it's a lot easier to eat. But these were cheap, and they do offer the bone, which is awesome, because I can make a stock out of that. So I'm just adding some scallions, and then I was gonna do like, you know, some more ginger and some garlic, but then I thought, why not take my leftover lunch, not actually use the lunch, but there's all that liquid in there, which is like the soy sauce, the flavors of the vegetables, and the ginger and garlic and the chilies. So I'm gonna mix that around, I'll get a nice marinade on that chicken. You know, add a little bit of salt in there, and then I'm gonna actually smoke these in the barbecue tonight. Extra smoky. And it gets smoky. I went outside to eat, and it was extremely hot outside. I realized it's kind of the top of the day. It's like, you know, 1.30, very hot. So instead of trying to go outside and just burn myself out, I'm just gonna stay in and do a little bit of cooking, finish off the kimchi. I'm gonna caramelize some onions, and to do that, all you do is take your onions, slice them, you know, slice them thin, however you want. A little bit of oil in the pan, and then you want to just cook them extremely low for a long time. If you have baking soda, it's actually a trick. You can add a little baking soda to it, and they caramelize so fast. But the key is you don't want to fry these onions. You actually want to just cook them very low and slow. Save the other half of the onion. And to this, I'm actually, now these I'm going to fry. So I have like a more of a crispy onion, and then I have like a sweet onion. And instead of just trying to throw onions and stuff, this will give me like these nice little abilities to do fun things later. So before I actually fry up the onions, I'm gonna fry up a little bit of garlic. And it likes to make a lot of oil, but I'm doing that for a very specific reason. Wow, um, that is nice and hot. Just turn the heat off if it seems like it's too hot. The reason I'm, I'm frying it up with a lot of oil is because I actually wanna flavor this oil. So I will have a delicious flavored oil. Don't be afraid to just take it off the pan if it seems like it's too hot. That is very hot. Hop, 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 hop. Alright, gotta take these out right away. Granted, I'm struggling a little bit with these electric burners. I'm used to using um, gas. That is some of the sexiest garlic I've ever seen. And it's gonna be delicious for crunch. And now my oil is flavored and ready to go for Mr. Onions. And same deal. It's a lot of oil. But keep in mind, I'm gonna save this oil and have a delicious flavored oil after I'm done. It's no strainer situation, it's kinda fucking me. But it's all good. It just took, it's getting really hot. Some of them are starting to burn more than others. So I just took it out and put it in a bowl with the oil, but I'm gonna try to figure out a clever way to strain these without losing too much of that delicious oil. Yeah, they look greasy, but it's okay, I can pat most of that dry, no big deal. I've got these crispy onions that, you know, like I said, they look like oily, but they're actually just crispy and delicious. And I've got this oil that's flavored like onions and garlic that I can now use to cook and just instantly flavor stuff so much better. Meanwhile, over here, we've got our caramelized onions going. And see how they're starting to change colors? They're not like frying up too much, but they're starting to get like this kind of golden brown glorious experience. That's what you want. You just want it to cook low. And it's gonna take a long time, take like 45 minutes, but no big deal. Then over here is another special thing. Just a little bit of rice vinegar, sugar, and salt. And then I'm gonna add ice cubes to it. And the ice cubes are gonna cool it down. And this is a pickling solution, which I can add anything to. I'm most likely just gonna pickle some carrots, but we'll see what else I feel like. Rule number one in the kitchen, never cook with a shirt. Rule number two, I don't really care about rules. So this is actually a cool trick that I saw from Mr. Dan Delaney. He did a video um, on Vice recently, making this smoked pork. And instead of, usually you would put, this is the vinegar, salt, sugar solution. Usually you would add water to that to dilute the vinegar. But what he did was to cool it down, because it's really hot, I wouldn't want to put the carrots in there now because it'll cook them. So instead of adding water earlier, he adds a solution to ice cubes, which is kind of genius, because then as it cools it down very quickly, then you get the water. And all I'm doing is taking these carrots and I'm just gonna peel them. And this will get me kind of a cool looking uh, pickle. What I can do though, which I would say I even prefer, is this thing, this is like a, they use in Thailand a lot to make like shea papaya salad, like a julienne peeler. Um, and this will actually give me 
just like more texture. I can do both. Like there's no rules. Like I can I can shave them and they'll pickle very fast. They'll pickle in like an hour. Um, at least they'll start to. And as the days go on, I get more and more letting the days go by. But in this case, let's just go do a little mixture. And then I'm going to also add some a little more garlic and more ginger. Have that pickle too for a little variation. -ace. Realize I think I need a bigger one of these guys. So they go in. Go in anything that, any scraps, any this stuff, peels, whatever. I'm actually going to make a stock with that. So it might look like I'm getting rid of it, but absolutely not. Especially when you're trying to save in a budget. you got to use every little bit. And what do you know? It did fit in here after all. And that's just going to sit for a few hours, hour, a day, whatever. It's going to keep getting more and more delicious. Almost totally forgot to add <laughs> the ginger. skill right there and now it is time to do most people's least favorite part clean the dishes but do not fret if you clean as you go it really helps I've been cleaning as I go I have a little bit to go but uh, cleaning the dishes is kind of fun it's meditative you know these are pretty much done they turn out interesting they're kind of part fried part caramelized um, but they're gonna be delicious either way let me try one oh my god I haven't made caramelized onions in so long damn <laughs> If you just take simple ingredients, cook them well, do fun things with them, you can end up making great food very easily. And that's what this challenge is also reminding me of. Like, don't get boggled down with too many ingredients and having to do a million things. Like, take one thing, take an onion, make it taste delicious. Take an egg, make it taste delicious. Take a carrot, make it taste delicious. You put them together, you get some extra delicious, glorious. First off, this place is freaking beautiful. And second off, I just hit another jackpot of those wine berries. And when you start seeing wine berries and blackberries and raspberries, if you see them in one place, you're probably going to see them around. So it's good to keep looking. And check this out. Now, I know what you're thinking. Eating berries in the wilderness is dangerous. And to a point, that is very, very true. However, if you look at these berries, and unfortunately, they're not all like perfectly ripe. I feel like in a week or two, you're going to be in crazy heaven wine berry season. But if you look at these, it looks like a raspberry, right? It's a cluster of berries. So this one berry is actually, you know, like a hundred little berries. And any berry that looks like that is safe to eat. Still, make sure you learn about how to pick berries first before you do this because it's not worth the risk. I've made the mistake before. It's not worth the risk. Or I've almost made the mistake of eating something deadly. So I've seen a lot of wineberry trees that either have nothing fruiting or like unripe, but this tree is mother load and I am very happy I'm going to collect. Spotted another glorious edible, one of my favorites. This is wood sorrel and it's crazy tasting. It tastes like very lemony and citrusy and it's a delicious herb. Can't say I found too much, but you know, that's a nice little treat right there to bring home with me. Foraging, if you learn about it and you're safe and you're smart and you go out with a professional, it will change your life. Learning how to Hunting for mushrooms is so exciting because you find mushrooms that you can't buy at the store. Uh, learning how to get greens is delicious, herbs, whatever you can find. It's a huge skill and I suggest anyone try it. Just be very cautious and go out with a professional first. Make sure you absolutely know when you're getting something that is safe with 100% certainty because you don't want to make that mistake. But otherwise, have fun. This is pretty cool. This is actually sassafras, which that means there's a big sassafras tree growing. It plants these shoots here. And you see by the leaf, this one has three, this one has two, and then this one has one. That's how you know. And what's cool about them is you can pull it up and make like, it's the original root beer. So you take the root, you boil it down, um, that's how they used to make root beer. I'm going to take these mustard greens. So I actually haven't really cooked with mustard greens, but they're similar to a lot of other the, like Asian greens you'll find at the store. And they can be bitter. So I'm just kind of um, blanching them in water. Feel like salt and water. Just kind of blanch them until they look beautiful, you know, a minute or two, and then you shock them under cold water. And that way I can eat them raw or I can grill them, and grilling them is going to be freaking delicious. Finally, it is almost dinner time, and I'm very excited to have a cool little trick I'm kind of figuring out. So, you may have seen this before, but if you don't have a wood grill, you can use a gas grill, obviously, but you can get smoky flavor if you soak wood chips. These are mesquite wood chips. What is mesquite? 
I didn't actually know they're hickory wood chips. I don't even know what mesquite is. Maybe it's made from mosquitoes, Seinfeld. So anyhow, I've been soaking them for hours and now I just put them actually on the grate and you, you'll start to see a little bit of smoke coming out. As it heats up, it's gonna smoke everything in here when I close it. But I don't wanna cook these directly because they'll overcook. So I actually have the heat off in the back. The heat's only on the front. So I've got the chicken that's been marinated. I'm gonna smoke a carrot because I like the smoke. And then I've got those mustard greens in the back. But what I wanted to do was make a smoky barbecue sauce because I actually saw a cool trick to use rice paper to make bacon. So I'm gonna smoke a barbecue sauce and then use that to make the rice paper bacon. Smoke situation is rocking. Now I've got the pan here and I've got the chicken marinade. I'm not gonna waste that because that has endless flavor going on. The flavor, it just, it just doesn't end, folks. There's no end to the flavor of madness. Then I take soy sauce. This is like an Asian sort of barbecue sauce. A bunch of soy. A bunch of rice wine vinegar. Bloop, bloop, bloop. And then of course, mi favorito, sugar. I can always change the flavors. There's already scallions in there. I could add some ginger garlic if I want, but I think that's pretty good. And now check out this feast in probably an hour. I mean, we'll see how long. The chicken like doesn't need to smoke too long. If I smoke it for 30 minutes to an hour, then I can cook it and I'll still get a lot of smoke flavor, but that thing is rocking out. Just want to give you a little update. I kind of moved some things around. So I put the chicken here. I got rid of the middle burn. I, I didn't really mean to put that on. And the pan is under it, so it's collecting the chicken drip bizzles. Then I've got this stuff on top, and everything else is still the same, but you can already see the chicken getting that glorious smokiness look. All right, well I took the mustard greens out. Let's do another peek here. Oh my lord, come on. You cannot get that with regular grilling. You need the smoking experience. And the chicken is feeling great, but look at the drippings. That's gonna be epic of barbecue sauces. Even little carrots looking interesting, but it's gonna be delicious. And I guess the grill either ran out of gas or, I don't know, flame blew out, but look at this meal. I can only have one piece of chicken a day, actually a short one, uh, but I'm still happy I got some delicious chicken. Cool, so I just took these rice noodles and, uh, oh, rice paper, try to turn them into noodles. I forgot a freaking scissor, which really helps to make them actually look like noodles. It's okay, I broke them up anyway. It's good to know you can still break them up and get something. Uh, but I first saw this at Ban Trang Chong. It's a Vietnamese dish. It's like a street food. They have these rice noodles that are, or again, right, freaking rice paper that is cut up. And they add like beef jerky and quail eggs and all kinds of stuff to it. And then the rice paper, when the sauce hits it, it kind of soaks up and becomes this really chewy, delicious noodle thing. So I'm just going to use that as like the base of this dish. Love a mountain on both these you and it. Which in the movie she said so. like a beauty don't say squeeze some lime on there always always I will go right in sauce usually I like to just try it separate first but this is actually the best sauce that I've ever made in my entire human existence so I'm just gonna go for it oh my god do you realize what you've done oh and by the way, the rice noodles are real, and they're fantastic. Remember those rice noodles we soaked? They clumped up together, but they're all these little bits. 
tastes kind of like meat in the most amazing way ever. I feel like I'm eating like an Asian barbecued pulled pork because everything is just pulling apart. But you get the chewiness, it's like fatty. I bet you if I fried this right now, it would be the best thing I've ever had. And thus brings up another point. When you're cooking a meal and you sit down, if you are not satisfied with that meal, or you come out with another idea mid-meal, pause your meal and see it through. Or pause your meal and make that not so great meal taste better. Sometimes it's something simple, a squeeze of lime, a crispening of something that needs crispy. I was watching Hot for Food earlier and they were doing this idea with rice paper to make bacon and crisp it up. And I've cooked rice paper. I've done lots of different crazy things with the rice paper, but I haven't like fully explored the potential of stuff. And I didn't realize, I guess, rice paper bacon's a thing or maybe they created it. And on the show, the girl on the show, Toyota or something, I think it's her last name, um, she really didn't like it. She thought it felt like too much like an ear and it was like too weird and like skin to her. I was like, wait a second. That sounds amazing. And this? Is better than bacon. That's right, I said it. These crispy caramelized onions with the chicken. A little bit of green, which the mustard green is very chewy, but Great texture and it's fun to keep chewing. It's like, almost like bubblegum lettuce. This bite though right here, tastes exactly like a smoked duck. And duck is my favorite.